I'll start by inviting up Suzanne Forster, and uh, she has uh, a total of nine minutes. Uh, some folks have ceded time to her, and uh, she will be followed by uh, uh, Jack uh, Skinner. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, good morning, commissioners and staff. I'm Suzanne Forster, a Newport Beach resident, and I would like to comment on the water supply for the Newport Banning Ranch project. The application, uh, the, the, the uh, applicant's application was recently certified, uh, raising questions about emissions in the application, some of which directly su uh, affect water supply. But there's only time for one of those questions today, and that is where is the water coming from? California is now in the fourth year of the worst drought in 1,200 years, based on studies by NASA and others. According to the American Geophysical Union, Central and Southern California have experienced some of the lowest water year precipitation totals in the observational climate record, the effects of which have been amplified by record high temperatures. Diminished snowpack, stream flows, and reservoir levels have resulted in a convergence of reduced water supply with heightened demand that appears to be unique in modern California history. The study also predicts that future hot droughts driven by increasing temperatures will have a substantial influence on future water resources supply in the western United States. The most current document that deals with the project's water supply is a 2010 water supply assessment report, that's WSAR for short, and this report was done by the City of Newport Beach as part of its environmental review under CEQA. By law, the report must evaluate the water supply for the project over a 20-year period, which in this case goes to the year 2030. The report was based on a 2005 urban water management plan, and it concluded that there was uh, enough water for the project. However, a disclaimer in the last uh, paragraph of the report puts the entire report into question. And this is a quote, it's acknowledged that uncertainties have come to light since the 2004 urban water management plan. However, that's okay. However, record drought, climate change, and environmental conditions are beyond the scope of this assessment. So right there, the report acknowledges that record drought conditions have not been taken into consideration in evaluating the project's water supply. The disclaimer also says updates from the city, from MODOC, and from the Metropolitan Water District will address these issues. I checked for updates from all of those agencies. I found none. I also called the city and was told that there was no plan to update the WSAR despite it being virtually unusable for water supply analysis. So this raises another question. In the throes of record drought with more of the same predicted, how can a project as massive as NBR, and I use the word massive because we're talking about a density higher than the last five large, coastal, large Orange County coastal developments combined, how can a project this big go forward with an unusable water supply? According to the WSAR, the project's water demands are estimated, and if, if these numbers are accurate, they're estimated at 613 acre feet a year, which is about 200 million gallons of water. And for those who don't know, one acre foot equals 325 million 581 gallons. On page 20, the report states that the city receives all of its groundwater from the lower Santa Ana Basin. But according to the Orange County uh, Water District's 2015 groundwater management plan, the Santa Ana Basin is already seriously overdrafted. The river's base flow has declined from a high of 158,600 acre feet in 1999 to a low of 64,900 acre feet in 2014. That's a loss of 93,700 acre feet, or 60% of the water basin's water supply. That's a very steep drop. Our other water resources are in trouble too. The snowpack, which supplies one third of the state's water, is expected to be at 6% of normal this year. 30 million people depend on the Colorado River for drinking water, but water deliveries from the basin dropped to their lowest in 2014. And the State Water Project plans to deliver just 20% of contracted amounts to water agencies this year. And here is where the 2010 WSAR goes off track. It states on page 22 that from 2007 to 2030, groundwater supplies will increase, it says increase, by 622 acre feet and imported water supplies will nearly double. And that's how they're planning, and that's how they're able to say that there is enough water for the project. And, but remember, this is a 2010 report that was based on a flawed 2005 report. So today, in 2015, we know that there is significantly less groundwater to draw on. 
Allotments are going down, not up, as are imported water sources. The only thing going up is demand. Projected water demands for Newport Beach will increase over 1,000 feet by 2030. So that's over 326 million gallons. And that's despite all the new conservation and water use efficiency measures. And there are many. There has been no lack of effort uh, to come up with conservation measures. Another growing concern is the depletion of our groundwater around the country and around the world. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, our global groundwater levels are now at historic lows. In California, in California Central Valley, they pump so much water out of the ground that the land is dropping by a foot a year in some areas. The earth is caving in. You have bridges sitting in water. The water's not rising. The bridges are sinking. This raises the question of whether the water supply for the project is consistent with the groundwater protections of the Coastal Act. Section 30231 of the Coastal Act requires preventing the depletion of groundwater. Uh, the, Santa Ana, uh, the Santa Ana Basin has already been depleted by 60%. How much more water are we going to take, and how much more can we take before we risk disasters like saltwater intrusion that could destroy the entire water supply? On May 12th, the city voted to declare a level three water shortage, which comes with mandatory 25% water restrictions that could trigger fines and penalties. So now we're cutting our water usage by 25%, and I think everybody understands the need to do that. But how much more will we have to cut to accommodate a project like NBR? And all the other projects that are going up, and there are lots of them, and all the projects that are already up. Uh, Orange County is in a development boom. We are number three in the nation in construction jobs. If you combined us with LA County, we would be number one. So how much more water do we have to cut to accommodate all that? 50%, uh, even more? At some point, this is not just a quality of life issue. It becomes a human health issue. And when we force all these cutbacks on residents and businesses, aren't we robbing Peter to pay Paul? The Banning Ranch development is a massive project that's going to take hundreds of millions of gallons of water every year, at least 200, we know that. We're in the throes of record drought with predictions of more to come. I've heard there is some possibility of an El Nino, but given that it will take 11 trillion gallons of water just to recover what we've lost since 2011, even the mother of all El Ninos is not going to fix that. That's why I'm urging you to do whatever is necessary to ensure that the project's water demands can be accurately estimated and reconciled with future water supply, not just for the present, but dating to 2030 as the law, uh, as the law requires. And please put all of your available resources into ensuring that our depleted groundwater sources are not being exploited, but instead are being protected and wisely used as required by the Coastal Commission and the Coastal Act. Thank you very much.